play some play video, games. video games for as long as you possibly can. Just ignore all your responsibilities. Exactly. Okay, I think we're live now. So hello everyone and welcome. This is Awesome Hardware. It's a live show. Hi! Ooh, that was a cool sound effect. Sorry, I realized I poured my beer too aggressively. That was very aggressive. Excuse me. A live show, we discuss technology. Uh, we stream every Tuesday evening at roughly 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. We do drink beer on the show, and we occasionally use adult language, so uh, you've been warned about both of those things. So don't don't be mad if you... Yeah, don't be mad. I'm going to address the elephant in the room right now. Um, this... What you drinking there, pal? There's this is some... actually a very... Expensive fruit punch, super fancy uh, looks, type of barley wine. Looks like fruit punch. It's it's very expensive. You can only buy this like seasonally, once a year. There's a waiting list. Actually, no, I'm just kidding. It's a uh, Bud Light Michelada. Chelada, Chelada from from good old Bud Light. It's it's with my Clamato. guilty pleasure with Clamato. If you don't, I don't, know, I don't even know what Clamato is. Clamato is like tomato juice, but they use clams too. Yeah, it doesn't sound appetizing when I say it like, like that. How could we make tomato juice less appealing? <laughs> Even nastier. Seafood. But so, but see, so you pair it with beer, and it becomes okay again. Yeah. It's like it's basically this a michelada is like a bloody mary, but instead of vodka, you're using beer. It's kind of like blood juice, more or less. I've di we've discussed blood juice on the show before. It does contain real blood. Many moons ago, but blood juice is a mm. similar concoction. Mix multiple things together that don't seem like they should work. Somehow, <sighs> it ends up being delicious. Yeah, I know. I know this is a terrible beer, but I still like it, and I don't care. You know, you shouldn't you shouldn't feel bad about things that you enjoy. I don't. Stop judging me. So that's what we're here about. Speaking of enjoying things, uh, we hope you enjoy our show. And if you do enjoy it and you want to help support our channels and stuff, then you can also consider buying some merchandise. You can go over to my store at net to buy yourself some merch. I have exclusive new... Thumbscrew infant onesies. In all sizes. Yes, indeed. For all people. I don't know if you can get these. These are limited sizes, limited where's, range. Where's the 5XL? But oh. uh, I have a I have a daughter now. I've, I've shown her off in a few of these. I, th I think it would be cool if we had, they were adult size onesies. Yeah, I, you could have I a onesie often, party. A onesie land party. I could see a land party with a bunch of dudes wearing these. I often feel like it would be nice to snap my t-shirt down underneath my crotch. I've always Come in useful in many situations. Dreamt about that. But anyway, after showing off my daughter in a couple of the custom onesies that uh, John, our merch guy, made, uh, got some requests for them, so they're now available. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and do that. Again, it's a limited run, uh, so, you know... Is there a certain month forever, range for how, how old your infant has to be to fit, fit this? It's available in a few sizes, I believe. Newborn, oh, six, six months. months, 12 months. Oh, nice. Hana has already grown out of her six-month one, so we, we recently got a 12-month one. I'm going to take a picture of her to put on the... On the site there as well oh, yeah. to help be fun. sell stuff. Beyond that, I got some uh, onesie, uh, onesies. I got beanies. Awesome hardware merch. Oh, onesies we're, we're for actually your head. Get going through some of the awesome hardware merch, which is on sale, like 15 bucks for the awesome hardware Star Wars shirt. Yep. So if you guys want to buy that stuff. And we have these new uh, hoodies that actually both Kyle and I have. Uh, Kyle's wearing yeah. his with his new logo on it. They're great. Um, I'm wearing, well, I'm not wearing mine because it's kind of warm right now, but... These are really nice uh, hoodies. We're going through a new supplier now. Yeah. Um, so these are actually new and improved design. Uh, the material is really soft and comfortable. It's sort of an all-season, all-weather type of hoodie. This one has been washed, and the thing that, that we, was really pointed out was that the fabric doesn't shrink at a different rate than the zipper shrinks. Right. So you don't get the wavy zipper thing. No wavy so zips. Nice. Anyway. Straight available, zips all around. Available in black and gray. Uh, and then Kyle, of course, has a bunch of new merch on his site as well because he's got his new logo i do shout what out are these new shirt styles kyle has shout out to rich uh richard our, our new designer um who did the uh, heat sink logo he actually designed these just on his own accord strip he was like hey i just i was bored so i made some cool designs and they're really great loading um, check them out they're, yeah there's a load just a loading circle super awesome so uh, people will be like what what shirt is that and you can yeah shirt needs updates shirt needs updates is great uh, when you need to uh you know if your shirt's not running properly yeah maybe uh Here's maybe you need you to update restart. it yeah get with the program nice. i like that yep uh, and there's also the uh the b saw oh yeah the, the blue shirt blue, of death blue shirt of death i like this one my personal favorite it's got the i remember i have a, i had a blue screen of death that was showing this screen and then it was starting to put the text below it but it just did the happy face and then said you <laughs> <laughs> like you're the problem. I was, the sad face, it's, and then it said you. you it was like you're to, sad. It was supposed to say like your computer has encountered an error. Right. But it literally it printed out you. It cut off the R, so it just sad face you. <laughs> anyway, 
<laughs> it's so meta. Yeah. So meta of Microsoft. I thought that was great. Um, there's also the uh, the new and improved, the 2.0 versions of the Heatsink logo shirts. We've actually shrunken down the logo a lot. Oh, here. And we've actually placed it to the side just to be a bit more minimalistic. This one here? I actually okay. like it a lot better than the larger ones, although the large ones are still cool. Okay. Um, same price and everything. And uh, yeah, go ahead and check those out. Groovy. Lots of merch available. Various shapes and sizes. Thanks for all your support for those of you who buy stuff. And if you do, uh, during Kyle's half of the show, which we're, is going to include the after party this week, we'll give you a shout out, uh, your name and Johnson, and we'll share all of your personal information. No, we won't do that. Uh, we Just will, your social. We will thank you. And that. Profusely. And all right. Uh, my half is going to be pretty much comprised of tech news today. I have some interesting stories to talk about. Uh, links for all of these are down in the video's description if you're interested, so uh, feel free to click on those if you want to read the stories, Bird. because we, we've we gone over them, we're going to give high-level details, um, but there's more info in there. Uh, first story here is from WCCF Tech. This is a, uh, one of Khalid's articles here, and this is some pretty impressive leaks about uh, the upcoming, well, what we presume are upcoming NVIDIA cards. Uh, it is WCCF Tech. There's rumors, so grain of salts. They even say, they even said right here, even WCCF Tech, they should just have, this should be part of their header, grain of salt there. It's in the, it's in the text. <laughs> well, wow, WCCF Tech said take it with a grain of salt. I know, that's, they themselves. That's saying a lot. The source for this information is whispers surfaced around the tech sphere, mm. which to me sounds like like uh, witchcraft or like a, like a sorcerer. Like, so there's the tech sphere and they're like, yeah, bring us the news, text from like, these whispers <laughs> going, NVIDIA, Ampere. So that's, anyway, that was the impression I got from that. When he reveals himself, he's a literal grain of salt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. that's, where the, that's where that saying actually comes from. Exactly. That's where all information is derived. Um, all right, so this is information about NVIDIA. NVIDIA's next generation of graphics cards is going to be based on a new GPU uh, microarchitecture. That is codenamed Ampere. Uh, right now we're on Turing. Prior to Turing was Maxwell. Uh, so this is all about the new Ampere-based cards. According to these rumors, uh, they are going to be built on Samsung's 7 nanometer EUV process tech. So finally getting that die shrink down. It's going to have AMD down under 10 nanometer. going to have NVIDIA down under 10 nanometer. Intel. I know. Intel needs Still to get waiting. on top of that, too. Intel said they're going to have some 10 nanometer desktop stuff in, in 2020, so... We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. And this, th there's no real release date or information about the Ampere stuff. It is expected to release in the first half of next year. Uh, NVIDIA doesn't always like to do launches of products along with um, tech shows or events like uh, CES and Computex. They do sometimes. It depends. But they often like to have their own little events, or they have like their uh, GeForce Developers Conference and stuff that they do. So sometimes you'll see them uh, do major product announcements and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, all remains to be seen. But we're talking about early 2020, hopefully, to find some more information out about this stuff. They say they're still all in on ray tracing. Uh, despite <coughs> the fact that uh, I feel like the original RTX series of cards received some flack for the fact that they were pushing ray tracing so hard, and then the actual ray tracing performance tended to suffer depending on how it was implemented. Uh, and it, 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 you know, people just weren't, aren't willing to take a massive frame rate hit for some extra eye candy mm -hmm. when it's as significant as it has been when you're turning on ray tracing in some games that have launched with it. It's gotten better though. But Ampere is supposed to be way better at ray tracing. So massive ray tracing performance improvements with Ampere. The cores will be faster and more power efficient compared to Turing. Uh, and then the second focus, apart from the RTX features, is rasterization and improving on the tile-based rasterization that they first introduced with Maxwell. Um, so that's that's kind of their focus. The, all of this is supposedly surfacing because NVIDIA specifically reached out to get in touch with their partners, their, their, their board partners that they work with. like. And this is in the article, but I'm just saying their board partners are companies like Asus and uh, EVGA and who else makes them? MSI, all the, all the companies that make NVIDIA graphics cards, third-party add-in board sellers. Um, apart from all those things I just said, they will also f feature more VRAM as well as higher clock speeds. Uh, they're talking about 100 to 200 megahertz higher clock speeds, uh, but that's it's not terrible uh, by any extent. And also potentially lower TDPs, again, all compared to the um, existing Turing stuff that's out there. So, 
that's all that's all good news for the most part assuming it's true um nvidia currently kind of has a lock on the high-end graphics card space you know they're selling rtx 2080 ti's for over well over a thousand dollars and people keep buying them so uh what reason do they have to change that well, they might not have a reason, but it seems like they are still planning to change it because pricing uh, is allegedly going to be about the same as touring for equivalent cards at their different in those different uh, price slots. But the higher end parts, so your RTX 3080 and your RTX 3080 Ti, assuming Nvidia continues with that naming convention, will cost slightly less than the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti. Really, I'm okay with that. Uh, I have said for a while that I think those RTX, like especially the 2080 Ti, it's just so expensive. Yeah. And it sucks for that level of card to be so out of the reach of so many people. But apparently they're still selling, so who am I to talk about cards being too expensive? That's surprising. Apparently people still buy them, so... Hey, whatever. But NVIDIA still says they're going to sell them for less. So what do you think? If the, if the RTX 3080 Ti is, is 999 like for the Founders Edition, are people going to be like... Thanks, NVIDIA. It's only $1,000. Way to go. Was the RTX 2000 series just an anchor that AMD was chucking out, or that NVIDIA was chucking out there as far as they could to establish people's expectations for what a high-end graphics card could cost so that they could come back later on and release a card for what is still a very high price but comparatively would look less? Hmm. This is all a psychological manipulation game Mind games. playing on yeah. all of us consumers trying to buy graphics cards and play video games. I wouldn't put it past them. Kyle says yes. I'll still buy one, though. I'm still going to buy it, though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if, you, you get more, if you get more frames out of it, then but the... obviously you have to. Yeah. Uh, last point here, I guess, is that they're allegedly also going to run at lower voltage even than Turing. Potentially even less than 1.0 volts. 1.0 volts. Uh... Speculation there how about how that might affect overclocking whether you can still crank up the voltage or if there's going to be some sort of cap on it that Nvidia puts This is a uh, this is all Whispers that came out of that tech sphere thing. So um, who knows for sure? Hopefully we will find out at some point and we'll clarify for you once we know directly from Nvidia or more information like that. So cool uh, 30 3080 and 3080 Ti Coming next year, I guess probably I don't think they're going to be priced lower. Not lower? Sounds like a bad business move. Mm. They could be priced higher and people would still buy them. So why not make uh, more money? I think the, yeah, I mean, from a business perspective, you're right. Um, but there's also, like, the public perception when it comes to business, pers uh, comes to running a business, PR. Exactly. The, and, and stuff, so. Since when does NVIDIA care about that? You're, probably, you're right about that, too. <laughs> All I'm saying <laughs> is if you're looking for a reason why they might sell a 3080 Ti for a lower introductory price than they sold the 2080 Ti, yeah, might be for multiple reasons like that. And they might, it might be, maybe there is a 2080, maybe there's a 3080 Ti Super, right? That's what we're going to have. Don't get me started, Paul. 3080 Ti Don't even Super. get me started. You heard it here first. <laughs> Selling for fourteen hundred dollars, and that makes the thirty eighty Ti for a thousand bucks super reasonable. I'm just, I'm. But you know that's going to be the catch. Like the thirty eighty and thirty eighty Ti are 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 going to be lower. And it's like, yeah, we, we made good on our promise there, but then they're going to have this, they're going to drop gonna, the super. You're going to stick another one above it. They're going to drop, yeah, they're going <laughs> to drop the super, which is basically taking the place of the Ti, the XX eight zero Ti. And it's going to be the same um, thing all um, over again. Unless it, it's, it's, it's um, a gotcha. It's a big old gotcha, Paul. Don't believe him. Well, Don't believe unless Ingridia. You, unless you look... <laughs> at, so if you look at the 1600 series, the 1660, the way, they, the way they're apparently looking at it there is there's, there's just your regular 1660, <laughs> then there's the Super, then there's the TI. So the TI in that lineup is on top. We don't have a TI Super card yet. I, I, I don't know whether... I, I really hope they don't do that, or whether it'd be kind of funny <laughs> if they actually did. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. That'd be super confusing. It would be very super confusing, but um, I don't know. We just have to wait and see. So <laughs> we'll, we'll figure that out. When they released a TI Super and a Super TI. Super TI. Super TI versus Back a TI forth. Super. And they're at completely different ends of the spectrum. Like one's, <laughs> one's an entry level card for like 150 bucks. <laughs> and then they take you a page know, like, out of EVGA's book and they release the, the TI Super Super. Oh, the Super Super Clock. <laughs> 
I mean, at, at least there's no shortage of potential names that they might. Did name. you notice that EVJ did away with that branding once the Super Cards came out? You can't have a Super you Clock. You can't have a, a GTX sixteen sixty Super 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 Clocked. GTX sixteen sixty Super 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 Clocked. The SSC version. Yeah, that'd be the Super 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 Clock. Super, that'd be triple Super. <laughs> wow, that would be. I'm losing my mind. That would be tough to deal with. Ugh. Okay. God help us. Speaking of tough to deal with, uh, Fantex had to issue a, an update to one of its cases ah! uh, just yesterday, today. Um, they're changing the name of their Fantex Enthu Lux 2. <clears throat> no! Uh, it will now be renamed the Enthu 719. Why? Why is Fantex just going and changing the name of this case? It's so lame. Thermal Take. That is why. The reason Come why on, is because thermal of take. Thermal Take. You're better than this. Thermal Take sent an, uh, a letter or an email or a registered. I don't know what they 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 they, they communicated the with Fantex. <laughs> passive aggressive text. Yeah, passive aggressive. <laughs> Fantex received a letter from Thermal Take about its right. Lux Two case being too similar to Thermal Take's existing Luxa Two brand. Uh, which is, which is, if you look at Luxa 2, it's all caps L-U-X-A-2 with no space. That's how, that's how Thermal Take brands their Luxa 2 merchandise. If you've never heard of Luxa 2, you, you're right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember which Luxa 2. negates the argument entirely, right? I remember Luxa 2 because it originally came out in 2009. It's like a separate brand for uh, mobile accessories, phone cases, car mounts for smartphones, charging cable, it has cables. has nothing to do with computer you're, cases. You're, that's what, it's a completely that's different. what Fantex wants you to think. If it was in the same category, I could see why, but yeah, not even close. So Thermaltake already has the LUXA2 brand, and they thought that Fantex's Enthu Lux 2 case might confuse consumers, so they sent them an email and said, "Hey, cut it out! You can't, ha you can't have that name. It's our name." Uh, so Fantex, dumb. in response, so uh, changed the name. Now, Fantex could have gone another route here, and they could have uh, fought this. Um, I don't know if I don't know if they were going to go into court or anything like that. I I'm not sure how those types of things typically proceed. Hi, Tim. Thanks for auto playing your video. Um, <laughs> Close that. Anyway, Damn it, so, Tim. Sick of your shit, Tim. But they opted to uh, just skip over all that potential litigation, dealing with lawyers, getting the getting the courts involved, and they're like, all right, we'll just change the name, and we'll uh, we'll, Come along we'll give a snarky response. Um, <laughs> they said we would like to move on and spend less time on this matter and concentrate more on creating innovative products for our users. Thank you for your understanding. Do they mean by that? Is it implied by that that Thermaltake is not creating innovative products for their uh, for their users? I don't know if that's a jab necessarily. I think it's a veiled jab. I think it's funner I, if it's a jab. Ah, uh, yeah, obviously. Yeah, I, that's what they were. We more to that's talk what about. they were implying. Yeah. Um, Shots fired. Yeah. Pew pew. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Fantex strongly disagrees with Thermaltake's actions in this matter, but they've decided to rename their product rather than going through litigation. The case is still exactly the same. Uh, product listings for it are still exactly the same. Apparently, if you go to Newegg, like, the URL is still the same. It's just the, the name listing on product page is right. going to be the same. And I imagine they have existing inventory that's out there that still says Lux2 on it that uh, eventually, you know, they'll probably have to read, you know, update the packaging if they keep continuing to sell the case and everything like that. Yeah. So anyway, if you were looking for a Lux 2 and suddenly you can't find one, look for the Enthu 719. Why is it 719? Where did that come from? I can't figure that out. 719. I, I feel like... I feel like everything Fantex... was 500. Everything was an H500 something. So they're like, let's just mm -hmm. pick a random number, 719. I feel like Fantex is such a small company. It's even like compared to a company like Thermaltake, I could see why they backed off immediately and didn't want to take them to court. Thermaltake yeah. could easily outsue them. They're such a small company that I feel like a lot of their marketing team bleeds over into their engineering team. Hmm. So I feel like when they're th when they're talking about a certain product name, it's it's kind of like the Lee and Lee approach where it's like this is the number, this is the uh, the prototype number that we, you know, we started with and that's that's what we want to call it because all the engineers are on the same, you know, plane of uh, of understanding. It's like 719. That's that was the Maybe they just reverted to one of their, their inter internal naming scheme. That would be my guess. Like that. That, would, that would make some sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And to be fair here, Thermaltake is, uh, you know, 
they're 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 standing on relatively solid legal ground in 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 taking this action. Um, but we can also uh, think that it's petty bullshit and uh, right. Yeah, that's that's our that's that's what we can do. I mean, I don't want to tell you guys what to think. That's what I think. Um, At the other day, who's going to be confused between Luxa two and? Lux 2. Not many people. The mobile accessory versus the dual chassis super niche computer it's, computer case. It seems a little trolly on dual Thermaltake's, system, I should say. Uh, on Thermaltake's uh, side of it. And um, right. who wrote this article? Paul Lilly from PC Gamer, who wrote up this little article on it, even points out later on uh, about the legit reviews post comparing several Thermaltake products with similar designs to the competition, because they have been accused of doing that before as well. Um, Fractal and all that. Yeah, which sucks because Thermaltake has some products that I think are pretty good. Yeah, that are sure. unique to other products and everything. Definitely. But it just it, it's disappointing when they when they do stuff like that that uh, detracts from your, your it's overall a, view of the brand. Puts a divide in the PC master race. Yeah. So anyway, moving on. Heart Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, oh. Now available oh. for PC. Or is it? Available to play. Kyle <laughs> downloaded it. It will not it will not does, launch. Does not launch for me. On this computer over here. Yeah. Which is sad because we were gonna play it in, in, the, in the second half. We'll try we'll try again later, but we'll see if it no magically promises. starts working. But uh, there are some uh, early bar bench barnch benchmarks that have popped up. Uh, Joker did some benchmarks. I'm not talking about those, I'm talking about the Guru 3D ones, but just so you guys know, if you want to go to Joker Reviews, he has a, a video he also posted with Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmarks. Um, yeah. Yeah? Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is awesome on PC for a few reasons. Uh, native 4K resolution, refresh rates up to 120 frames per second, uh, consoles cap at, at 30. Um, quote from the article, where on consoles, far off details sink into the fog. Uh, so we're talking about like draw, di draw distance there. They can still be seen on the PC. Treetops at a distance. Hmm. Shrubs, grasses, and other vegetation appear much denser. Characters, carriages, buildings, or the muddy ground in the town of Valentine are crisp. Uh, there are also significant increases in terms of lighting and effects. So uh, that's cool. Uh, GTA 5, for example, going from console to PC, mm -hmm. saw an amazing improvement in uh, visual quality and, and all that kind of stuff, to say nothing of, of mods and everything like that that were made for it after the fact, too. Downside, I guess, is it's a, it is a massive game, 100 to 150 gigs of space it's going to take up on your storage drive. It's That's about 50 gigs more than, I guess, the consoles take up. Uh, Guru 3D's testing was performed with the 9900K and Azrock Taichi Ultimate Z390 motherboard, 32 gigs of DDR4 3200 memory. Uh, and here are a few of the results. Just going to go over some of them. First off, VRAM usage was tested at uh, 1080, 1440, and uh, 4K. Uh, you can see we're using over 5 gigs in all scenarios. Um, I'm not exactly sure what they're using to monitor VRAM usage because there are some. Uh, it's a mix up there about uh, the, the game's requested VRAM versus what's actually being used. But in all cases here, we're talking more than 5 gigs, but less than 6. So that might indicate that uh, you're probably okay with a 6 gig graphics card. Yeah, like a 1660 or something like that. That's reasonable. Uh, and then they tested quality modes uh, with the 1080 Ti and that setup, and those can all be shown here. Ultra HD, 4K, WQHD, 1440, and Full HD at 1080. Uh, and you can see favoring performance, balanced, and favoring quality, and the various results that you get there. As you can see, if you're about to play this game, do the favor performance thing. You get a lot more frames. Favor performance. Uh, just just a big jump up in frame rate. Uh, Huge. Often close to double in, in their testing, so, so that's all good. And good information for anyone who just wants to load up the game and start playing it, and not spend a bunch of time trying to suss out uh, proper settings. They did DirectX 12 versus Vulkan API testing, and uh, they're pretty much the same. It looks like uh, your Vulkan is maybe a smidge below, but not really anything significant. So that's good and interesting to know. They're going to do CPU core scaling tests. So again, this article is linked in the description, and I would encourage you guys to go back because they're going to test like four core system versus eight core and see what happens mm -hmm. there. Uh, and then we've got some results at 1080. So this is a full HD 1080. They are testing on ultra quality, so it's highest image settings. So you can potentially get more frames than are listed here. At 1080, we're getting 80 frames per second with a 2080 Ti. 
uh, which is taxing. It's taxing. Obviously, wow. this game is challenging to run. Um, of course, like GTA Five was too. Yeah, very scalable. I, I saw. I, I I think I saw Joker. He was tweeting about. Um, some of the setup stuff, and there's something like, there's a ton of presets. There's like 15 or 20 different preset, quality presets you can wow. choose between, so um, I don't envy anyone who's gonna go and try to do <laughs> comparisons between those. Yeah. Uh, as you can see though, the 5700 XT is right up there with the 2080, sitting between the 2080 and the 2070 Super, so pretty good performance there. Solid. 5700 likewise is getting up over 60 FPS, so anyone who's uh, got a you know, $300, $350 graphics card and up when it comes to the modern stuff is looking pretty good. 2070 suffering a little bit. 2060 Super also a bit behind by, you know, 8, 9, 10 frames compared to the 5700 cards. So, again, it's been interesting to watch the continuing battle between the 5700 cards. I mean, I can tell why they're popular. There's a lot of people who, oh, yeah. have, who have been interested in them. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Meanwhile, at 1440, the 2080 Ti is able to get 66 average frames per second. Uh, the rest of the cards fall out sort of in a similar fashion to the 1080 results. Um, nice to know that if you, if you do have a 5700 card from AMD that it's beating the Titan XP. Mm -hmm. That's a big X little P, by the way. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. And all the way down the stack, um, you know, you, you can... And again, ultra settings here. So if, yeah. you're, if you're looking at these results and you're like, man, I've only got a you know, 1080 or a 590 or, you know, any of these lower-end cards, you can adjust those settings, turn them down, and you can get more frames. Uh, finally, here's your 4K results, 43 FPS for the 2880 Ti. Uh, in the 30s range for your 5700s, your 2080, your Titan XP, your 2070 Super, your 1080 Ti, uh, and then dropping by 5 to 10 frames as you get down to the 1070s, the 590s, the 1660s, and so on and so forth. So there you go. Uh, sort of a rundown of the... Performance you might expect if you're going to play Red Dead Redemption 2. And again, uh, good job on Guru3D getting this article up pretty quickly. And uh, I'm interested to see what sort of numbers they have resulting when they do the testing with the different CPUs. I'm very curious uh, what the SLI scaling's like, too. Hmm. You think it will? I think it'll be. I don't know. I'm just. Uh, I think it'll be something, but I, it, it's not going to be good. I don't think it's going to be great. Like, I don't even remember if GTA Five scales. Are they on the same engine? Are they? Are they on the? I don't know. Um, the was it Rage? I don't know if it is, or if it's like a newer version of it. I can't. I can't be sure. I'm not positive either. But anyway, we'd like to try that out. Uh, 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 two. We might play on Kyle's hat. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. It's looking unlikely no, right no now. Promises though. <laughs> All right. Here's an article from PC Games N, and it was an interview with Lisa Sue, uh, the CEO of AMD, Doctor. Dr. Lisa Sue. Doctor. Um, she actually did an interview with Venture Beat. So I've linked both of these in the in the description. If you want to read the Venture Beat article, it goes down and has the, you know, another fun pop up video that auto plays. It's got the actual questions with Lisa's actual answers. Uh, PC Games N did a uh, Dave Dave over at PC Games N did a uh, little synopsis of it here. So pick your poison on those. But this is all uh, forward looking stuff for next year, for the most part. Uh, next gen Ryzen 4000 Renoir APUs. Uh, if you're familiar with AMD's APUs, uh, since Ryzen launched, the APUs or the CPUs with graphics integrated, they're slightly confusing because they they use the higher number yeah. for the last gen architecture. The older so architecture, yeah. the original APUs were the 2200G and 2400G. Those mm -hmm. used the first gen architecture that all the 1000 series desktops used. Right. Now we have 3000 series APUs that are using Zen Plus, which is what the 2000 series desktop uh, CPUs used. And now we're going to have 4000 series APUs. Renoir is the code name. Using These Zen will use 7 nanometer Zen 2 CPU cores. Uh, unfortunately, it sounds like they're going to be pairing them with Vega graphics core, uh, uh, graphics, mm. which is just a little bit disappointing because you know they have Navi available, yeah. uh, which, which performs better. Right. Um, Navi is what's going to be used in, in the, I, I'm assuming, SOCs that they build for the uh, PlayStation 5 and yeah. the Xbox Scarlet. Right. That's true. So, we'll have to wait and see. I don't know if, if they're going to have various versions of these, and they might have ones with Navi and ones that aren't. Um, 
but that's just what the article says, so we'll, we'll go with that for now. Yep. Uh, Lisa says, we are well underway with Zen 3 as a follow-up, uh, follow-on for 2020. Even though 2019 was a big product year, I think 2020 will be an even larger product year for us. So AMD is piling on, building on their success with the uh, first, second, and third gen Ryzen. Uh, both of these Zen, uh, both the Zen 2 based APUs and the Zen 3 CPUs will sport Ryzen 4000 nomenclature. So just like right, just like I said, right now we have 3000 series for the desktop CPUs. We have 3000 series APUs that are last gen. Uh, it's weird. I I, I, I do kind of wish they would have gone about that naming Sync scheme a little different and made yeah. it a little bit more straightforward, but. I agree. We just have to keep pointing that out every time we talk about that. Mm -hmm. Also, AMD doesn't like to use APUs anymore. I got so yeah. used to using that. What term, do they call them now? They just don't. They don't say. Uh, oh, well, I guess maybe she did say APUs. What else would well, you the call? The article them? says APUs. I don't know. That was an AMD term that they made, accelerated processor unit or whatever they yeah. tried to call them. I just got used to using it, and it was a convenient way of saying a CPU with an iGPU. Right. Um, Okay, so uh, other good news. So Zen 3 based CPUs, which are gonna be seven nanometer plus. So right now we're on Zen 2, seven nanometer. Zen 3 is gonna be seven nanometer plus. Uh, still gonna be using the AM4 chipset. So we are expecting to see a 4000 series of Ryzen processors that still slot into AM4. Uh, Crazy. So that's pretty cool too. Even, awesome. even more potential processors for that platform. Uh, the platform upgrade, which will require new motherboards and everything, will apparently be happening with Zen 4 in 2021. I'm okay with that, too. And that's yep. also AMD sort of following through on that promise that they said, which was that uh, AM4 would be a viable platform through 2020, which they promised mm -hmm. back in 2016. Yeah. Good. I think so. Good. That's, that's good on a company for following through like that and not making new platforms every time for their new products. Pro uh, consumer. I will continue to give AMD credit for doing that because, because I like it, especially someone who's, who builds computers and who recommends computers for people is like, look, you can buy Intel. If you ever want to overclock, well, you better spend like, you know, 180, 200 bucks on, on that overclocking motherboard. But honestly, that's a waste for anyone who just wants to buy entry level. Yeah. With AMD, just like, oh, we'll buy a B450 board and run it as is for now. And then, hey, if you, if you really like this thing you and you want to drop in a different cooler and upgrade your processor and do some overclocking, like, you can do that. It's, it's the flexibility that's there. So I hope yeah. Intel is listening a little bit because it would be cool to see Intel adopt some of these things just to, to kind of level the playing field between them and right. to be able to say, well, both both companies do this now, so now it boils down to more just sort of a performance comparison between the two. Yeah. But we'll see. Um, Zen 3-based CPUs will likely launch around summer again this year. So we're probably looking at a 4000 series uh, set of CPUs from AMD based on Zen 3, 7 nanometer plus, still AM4, launching summer, which would probably mean Computex time frame, June-ish um, or, or thereafter. Um, 7 nanometer plus for Zen 3, they're expecting a 10% performance bump. Wow. Uh, and that's not including potentially higher clock speeds. That's or maybe awesome. that's both. Again, this is early information, so grain of salt, just like with the, all the other stuff we've been talking about. All right, one Exciting. more story here to go over, and this one is we're back to WCCF Tech. We've we've come full circle. This is this is a <laughs> oh this, no. This article's from Hassan though, so um, it's more yeah. more legit. Well, no, but <laughs> 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 no, I've I've met Hassan. He's he's nice. Uh, and they do a good job throw, throwing all this rumor and speculation stuff together. And as much as we give them a hard time because they have published stuff in the past that's turned out to be complete uh, fabri True. fabrication, oh. yes. they it's it's not like they're trying to say like here's exactly how it is. They usually at the beginning say they're something along the lines of like this is a rumor, this is just stuff we've heard, yeah. blah blah. You know, heard it from someone they can't confirm who told them because then that person would get in trouble, something like that. Right. Anyway, this is a big dump of information about Intel's. 10th generation Comet Lake desktop CPU lineup. We've talked about Bingo. some rumors of the of, uh, of this in the past. It's it's coming really soon. Uh, it's a mainstream desktop platform, and it's going to feature CPUs with up to 10 cores and 20 threads. 
At the top end is a Core i9-10900, which apparently has an 80 watt TDP. Uh, not bad for a 10 core. Uh, W480 chipset as well, so there's some new chipsets. There's a new socket, LGA 1200. Z490 maybe? Z490 for, uh, for the chipset for unlock SKU motherboards. Um, and basically the entire lineup for this 10th generation family has, has leaked. So cool. Uh, blah blah blah. There is a layout here of Comet Lake S and the 400 series chipset PCH and all the stuff coming off of it. This isn't hugely different um, from prior platforms with the 300 series. Uh, you do get Wi-Fi 6 with it and then more processor cores. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. Still PCIe Gen Up 3. Up to 40 PCIe lanes, still Gen 3 of course. They're not magically wedging 4.0 into this. Again, they're listing platform PCIe lanes, which includes 24 off the PCH, which is actually four PCIe lanes that is uh, that is multiplexed or or split. So you still have 16 dedicated P uh, PCIe lanes. And I I always have to point out. I feel like I feel like when they've started doing platform PCIe lanes, that it's it's misleading for some mm -hmm. people. But anyway, up to 30 PCH high-speed I/O lanes for port flexibility. Uh, which, which is weird here because, it, oh, up to 30, what? PCHH high-speed I.O. lanes. It's a new nomenclature. I don't That's know. weird. Anyway, up to 40 PCA 3.0 lanes, media and display features, integrated discrete wireless AC, Wi-Fi 6, uh, enhanced core memory overclocking, USB 3.2, Gen 2 by 1, 10 gig gigabit, per, that's the same. Rapid storage technology, that's the same. Programmable quad-core audio DSP. Is that new? I don't know. <laughs> no okay. idea. C10. It's and, audio. <laughs> okay, and and support for modern standby features as well, which is which is kind of cool. All right, here's the actual chart with all the uh, CPUs listed on it. So at the top we have the 10900K, 10 cores, 20 threads. Clock speed is not currently listed, but they do have them listed for the 10900, going up to 5.1 gigahertz on a single core. Uh, so you might assume that the 10900K can do at least that, if not more. It's also weird that the uh, headline says 80 watt TDP for the 10900, but this chart says 65 watts. Come on, Hassan, where, where are you at? Where are you at with that one? Update this. Or maybe they meant that the TDP of the 10900K is 80 watts. Not sure about that. There's an 8 core 16 thread 10700K. Uh, there's a 6 core 12 thread 10500K. There's a 4 core 8 thread 10100K. And that's all for the core SKUs. Bear in mind here that all of these processors listed as core do have hyper-threading. So that's nice. Right? They're just Sure it is. They're hopping on the AMD bandwagon. Sure it is. Uh, cache is all listed there. Clock speeds were available. Um, and then there's a little bit more information about Xeon Comet Lake processors that are also coming out. Uh, oh, there's, there's the 80 watt TDP ah. for the Xeon V Pro. It must have gotten mixed around somewhere. Meanwhile, of course, this is a new socket, new platform, 400 series platform, uh, higher pin count. So uh, not backwards compatible. They're actually going to change up the keying and the socket there. So LGA 1151 has these notches here. LGA 1200 will have the notches moved, making it physically incompatible with the other socket, even though the sockets themselves remain the same size, hmm. which they've done uh, to, to maintain the same mounting mechanisms for coolers. coolers yeah. uh, so that does mean that you have backwards compatibility for your CPU cooler, which is really what's important. Who cares <laughs> about who cares about having to buy a new motherboard? No, yeah. And everything. Cooler's definitely the as biggest. As long as you can keep your cooler, that's what people are mostly like. I, as long as I can still use my Hyper 212, <laughs> right? Then then I'm all then I'm gravy. I don't mind spending a day swapping gravy. out my motherboard. Yeah. All this good. is the Sixth installment for Intel of 14 nanometer based desktop CPUs. Uh -huh. They've been on 14 nanometer for six generations of processors. Talk about beating a dead horse. That's uh, not what people were expecting back in 2009. I mean, at some point you got to run out of pluses. Six. Yeah. There's too yeah. many pluses. I don't in know there. how many pluses they want to add on the end or this, this, anything this, like this, that. This, so. So yeah, Intel's got some new stuff coming out, but uh, you know, it, it, you can't help but feeling like they're they're now the underdog when it comes to the mainstream stuff, simply because 
of what AMD's got on offer. Uh, I never know, thought I'd see the day. It's it's crazy how really how didn't. much it flipped and yeah. and um, how long it seems like Intel is taking to sort of an answer back in a, in, a, in a meaningful way. I mean, don't get me wrong. We've got more cores now, so they are upping that. But them them deciding finally go, to go from four to eight with the with the eighty seven hundred. And then finally, I'm sorry, from four, four to, to six, six. Yeah. and then finally from six to eight yeah. with the 9900, and now they're going from eight to ten. Right. Meanwhile, AMD has gone from eight to twelve to, to 16. sixteen. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, we we shall see how this all plays out and what pricing actually is and all That's that nuts. good stuff. Um, well, I guess one last thing to point out for anyone who is interested in this platform, because I'm sure there are those of you. Uh, out there who are because there are other things about Intel that people like Intel has been doing this for a very long time and gaming they're, they're pretty reliable and uh, and, they're, and they're very good gaming processors and stuff like that um, so a lot of people still like them but there are actually four different chipsets for this new platform uh, that are part of this leak Z490 is going to be the unlocked for overclocking chipset yet again W480 is an entry-level workstation chipset. Q470 uh, is for corporate environments and has Intel vPro integrated. Uh, here's, here's a breakdown of those, by the way. Uh, and then Intel H410 will be your value chipset and various specs for all those, like a lot fewer PCIe lanes. Oh, you only get PCI 2.0 on the H410? That's lame. Jeez, how cut down is that? That's you only pretty... get four SATA ports. Kind of stingy. You get zero, zero, zero USB, USB three point two. Oh, three point two. Man, it's pretty. It's harsh. Pretty chopped down. Anyway, so there, there's the rest of the spe specs listed there. Again, full articles linked in the video description, and that is all I have to say about that. Wow. All right, uh, guys, that's pretty much all I got for today. I was mainly focusing on the tech news. Uh, we're gonna switch over to Kyle's half, which is gonna be a little bit more relaxed. We got some pimp my PC. We're gonna be reviewing. Uh, we're gonna answer questions. We're gonna try to play some games. Yep. Uh, so we're gonna chill and enjoy ourselves. Hell yeah. If you're watching on Twitch, stay right where you are. We'll continue to stream there. If you're watching on YouTube, the link to Kyle's half is down in the video's description. Uh, big thank you to, uh, well, no, I, can't, I was about to thank Cell. Cell's, Cell's oh. not here today. He's uh, doing a secret mission. Crafty's Crafty Crafty Hack for him. has been uh, moderating. Thank you, Crafty, for thank being Kraft. here. Uh, thanks to your everyday tech for continuing to do timestamps as well. Thanks to all you guys for watching. We'll be right back. Yep. Okay, bye.